Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going over section 12.3, rate laws. We're going to explain the form and function of a rate law, we're going to use rate laws to calculate reaction rates, and we're going to use rate and concentration data to identify reaction orders and derive rate laws. So, rate laws or rate equations are mathematical expressions that describe the relationship between the rate of a chemical reaction and the concentration of its reactions. So you may remember rate expressions and we already had so we already had a mathematical expression that was related to the rate. The question is why do we need a separate one? Why do we need these rate laws? And if you remember our rate expressions relied us to, relied on us having information about both the concentration of reactants or products and the amount of time that had passed. And that's not very convenient to us, you know. Um, time can be a difficult thing to measure sometimes and when we're talking about these rates. And we want an expression that's going to relate the rate directly to the concentration without having to know anything about time. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to fit a polynomial uh, to the rate based on the concentrations, okay? So we have the concentration of A here and we have the concentration of B here. And M and N are going to be our uh, reaction orders, okay? And we have to fi figure out what these values are. Similarly, we're going to have to figure out K here, which is going to be our rate constant. So we have to do some work to get this equation to fit uh, the rate that we have observed and measured. But once we do that, uh, we have a pretty powerful expression here that's going to allow us to either calculate concentration directly from rate or calculate the rate directly from the concentrations. Um, as I mentioned before, M and N are the reaction orders, all right, and they're typically positive integers. Uh, so you're going to see like 1, 2, 3, for instance, here for M or N. But that's not always true. They can actually be fractions, they can be negative, and they can even be zero. So if it's zero, that means it doesn't actually depend on uh, that concentration at all, right? Because anything raised to zero order would be one, and it's going to take it out of the whole rate. The overall reaction order is the sum of orders for each reactant, okay? So in this example, the overall reaction order for this uh, reaction would be M plus N. So let's go over some examples of reaction orders. If I had a rate law that looked like this, there's an implied one right here. So this describes a reaction that is first order, one corresponds to first in hydrogen peroxide and first order overall because that's the only uh, exponent to add together to get the overall order. If it looked like this, and I've got a 2 here, this describes a reaction that is second order in C4H6 and second order overall. If I had a rate that looked like this, okay, this describes a reaction that is first order in uh, H plus and first order in the hydroxide ion concentration and second order overall. So we would have 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we get an overall second order. The rate constant K and the reaction orders M and N must be exper determined experimentally. Okay, so we need data in order to fit these values to it. Observations are made of how the rate of the reaction changes as the concentration of the reactions are changed. So we get those curves that we were looking at um, in the last section. The rate constant K is independent of the reaction concentration but it does vary with temperature, okay? So if once we determine our K value, that K value is only going to work at one temperature, all right? If we change the temperature of the reaction, we're gonna have to calculate a new K value. One way that we go about doing this is something called the method of initial rates. 
um, and this involves measuring the reaction rates for multiple experimental trials carried out using different initial reaction concentrations. All right, so basically we're going to see how that works out in our homework problems. But by care, being clever about what initial reaction concentrations we use, we can get some uh, clever cancellations. And that's going to allow us to be able to solve for uh, the reaction orders. Comparing the measured rates of these trials permits a determination of reaction orders. And combining reaction orders with reaction rate data allow us to formulate a rate law. Okay, so... Once we know the reaction order, once we know the concentrations, once we know the rates, then we can solve for K and we get our overall Ray law. The units of the rate constant depend on the overall reaction order. Okay, um, In our work and the homework problems and stuff, uh, we're just going to assume that the rate constants have the appropriate units that they need to have but we can look at what those units would be. Okay, so if our overall reaction order was zero, meaning it does not depend on the concentration of any of the reactants, all right, then we're going to get a concentration molarity per second, okay, which is, if we break that down further, would be moles per liter per second. Um, if it was first order, it's gonna be per second. If it's second order, it's going to be one over molarity per second, so per molarity per second, or liters divided by moles divided by seconds. And if it was third order, we actually wind up having to square the second order, and we get per molarity squared per second. 